Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. We are now live on Facebook. And welcome, me, at Ati Ching and Queer Ernie Salvador. And thank you for joining us on our eighth day. Wow, we are on the 20%, one fifth of our challenge, of our journey for the Draw the Circle, the 40 day prayer challenge. And we are so blessed that uh, Dr. Mamie Talbert of Yes Lord Ministries joined us tonight for our Draw the Circle reading. And it is about a one God idea. So Dr. Talbert, I give you the floor. Thank you so much, Pastor Nova. Greetings to each and every one of you. And of course, I always honor God who is the head of my life. I'm going to read one God idea. And it begins, speak to the earth and it will teach you. Job 12 and 8. Around the turn of the 20th century, the agricultural economy of the South was suffering as the boll weevil devastated cotton crops. The soil was being depleted of nutrients because farmers planted cotton in and year out. Enter George Washington Carver, yeah. one of the most brilliant scientific minds of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Carver introduced the concept of crop rotation and encouraged farmers to plant peanuts instead of cotton. Mm -hmm. The rotation of crops revived the soil, but it didn't revive the economy because there was no market for peanuts. <laughs> the abundant peanut crop rotted yeah. in warehouses because supply was greater than demand. Mm. When frustrated farmers complained to Carver, he did what he had always done. He took a long walk <clears throat> and had a long talk with God. George Washington Carver routinely got up at 4 a.m., walked through the woods, and asked God to reveal the mysteries of nature. Job 12, verses 7 through 8, was one of the most circled promises in his Bible. But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Mm -hmm. Carver took that promise at face value. He literally asked God to reveal the mysteries of nature and God answered his prayer. Carver is famous for discovering more than 300 uses for the peanut. But the genesis of those revelations was one conversation with God. In his own inimitable fashion, Carver shared the story behind the story. Mm -hmm. I asked God, why did you make the universe, Lord? Ask for something more in proportion to that little mind of yours, replied God. <laughs> why did you make the earth, Lord? I asked. Your little mind still wants to know far too much. Mm -hmm. Ask for something more in proportion to that little mind of yours, replied God. Mm. Why did you make man, Lord? I asked. Far too much, far too much. Ask again, replied God. Explain to me why you made plants, Lord, I asked. Your little mind still wants to know far too much. The peanut, I asked meekly. Yes, for your modest proportions, I will grant you the mystery of the peanut. Mm. Take it inside your laboratory and separate it into water, fats, oils, gums, resins, sugars, mm. starches, and amino acids. Then recombine these under my three laws of compatibility, temperature and pressure. Then you will know why I made the peanut. Mm. 
-hmm. On January 20th, 1921, George, George Washington Carver testified before the House Ways and Means Committee on behalf of the United Peanut Association of America. The chairman, Joseph Fortney of Michigan, told him he had 10 minutes. An hour and 40 minutes later, the committee told Carver he could come back whenever he wanted and take <clears throat> as much time as he needed. Mm -hmm. Carver mesmerized the committee by demonstrating a myriad in, of ingenious uses of the peanut, everything from glue to shaving cream, to soap, to insecticide, to cosmetics, to wood stains, to fertilizer, to linoleum, to Worcestershire, did I say that right? Sauce. <laughs> the next time you shave or put on makeup, the next time you stain the deck or fertilize your garden, the next time you enjoy a good old fashioned PBJ, remember that all of those things trace back to a man who had a habit of praying at 4 a.m. Those 300 uses of the peanut were not good ideas, they were God ideas. And one God idea is worth more than a thousand good ideas. Amen. Good ideas are good, but only God ideas change the course of history. God ideas. Every year we have an annual theme at National Community Church. It's not just some catchy phrase that rhymes with the year like learning to lean in 2013. It's the byproduct of pressing into God's presence and discerning what God wants to do in us and through us. The theme this year is simply this, get into God's presence. That is the solution to every problem. That is the answer to every question. Mm -hmm. We don't get a vision from God by going to conferences. We might get some good ideas, but God ideas are only revealed in the presence of God. Everyone needs counseling of some sort at some point in their lives, but our biggest problems are only solved in the presence of God. Go ahead and do a planning meeting. After all, failing to plan is planning to fail. Mm -hmm. But don't just brainstorm, pray storm. The mm. best plans are birthed in the presence of God. At some point in our lives, the best we can do isn't good enough. Our best solutions, ideas, efforts aren't good enough. That's when we need to hit our knees and trust God to do what only God can do. Mm -hmm. After all, Prayer is the difference between the best you can do and the best God can do. And that's a big difference. If we hit our knees, the Holy Spirit will do the heavy lifting. If we hit our knees, the Holy Spirit will reveal things that can only be discovered in the presence of God. If we hit our knees, the Holy Spirit will give us God ideas for our ministry, family, business, and for our lives. The solution to 10,000 problems. The modern mystic A.W. Tozer believed that a low view of God is the cause of a hundred lesser evils, but a high view of God is the solution to 10,000 temporal problems. If that's true, and I believe it is, then your biggest problem isn't an impending divorce or a doctor's diagnosis or a failing business. Please understand, I'm not making light of your relational, financial, or health issues. I certainly don't want to minimize the overwhelming challenges you may be facing. But in order to regain a godly perspective, on your problems, you must answer this question. 
are my problems bigger than God? Or is God bigger than my problem? Our biggest problem is our small view of God. That is the cause of all lesser evils. And a high view of God is the solution to all other problems. Until we come to the conviction that God's grace and God's power know no limits, we will draw small prayer circles. Mm. But once we embrace the omnipotence of God, we'll draw ever enlarging circles around our God-given, God-sized dreams. How big is your God? Is he big enough to heal your marriage or heal your child? Is he bigger than a positive MRI or a negative evaluation? Is he bigger than your worst sin, greatest fear, or biggest dream? If he is bigger than all of those things, then pray like it. May we pray at this time. As I read that passage of scripture, first of all, this is such a wonderful book. And this chapter reminds us of where our priorities ought to be. God is first in our lives. And if he is first in your life, then you know that God is bigger than any problem. There is a a question that was asked in the Bible, is there anything too hard for God? And as you read, as you study the word of God, you will find proof, you will find evidence that there is absolutely positively nothing too hard for God. Mm -hmm. And so as we get into the presence of God, we can expect to see the results of answer prayer. As we get into the presence of God, we can expect God to move on behalf of our situation, of our prayer requests, of our petitions. We can expect God. I always tell our church that expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles because God is a miracle working God. Let's pray at this time. Father God, we thank you right now. We thank you for this time that you've allowed us to share with these wonderful people of God. And Lord, we thank you right now for this 40 day prayer challenge. God, thank you for going before us, making crooked places straight and rough areas smooth. Mm -hmm. Thank you for teaching us how to pray and what to pray for. Help us to realize it's not in fancy words but it is in a sincere heart that is right with you. And so we thank you now, God. Help us to come before you expecting you to move on our behalf, knowing that you hear us when we pray, knowing that everything that concerns us is important to you. And so we thank you now. We thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives. We thank you for growing us in you developing our prayer lives. God, that we will be effective in prayer. Your word says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. God, you have proven that your word is true. You have proven that you are still powerful. You are still omnipotent. You still know all. You still can do anything but fail. And so we thank you now for doing it for us as we grow in you, as we get closer to you, and as we kneel before you in your presence. Thank you for giving us your ideas, God, the God ideas that will change the world and impact people's lives. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Mamie. Such a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Wonderful prayer. And thank you. And um, yes, who's our priority? 
Thank you so much. And everybody, keep on praying, keep on circling, and uh, keep in prayers. We are in the presence of God, and uh, the God idea will only be heard in that presence of God. And thank you so much, Dr. Mamie. Thank you so much, Ate Glo, Ate Miss Jane, Miss Robin Terulo, Miss Jane Pablo, Pastor Don, Miss Beverly, Miss Janet Rowe, Ate Ching, everybody. And thank you so much to all our Facebook um, uh, prayer warriors. And tomorrow, we'll see you again. Tomorrow is the... Day nine, Friday, Dream Factory. And it's with Beverly Alexis who will read for us. Day nine, Dream Factory. That's wonderful. So everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Keep on praying, keep on praying, keep on praying. God bless Bye -bye. you all. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Mimi. That's wonderful. Good to wonderful. see you. I Thank hope you. you can read again. <laughs> you can sign up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will. Thank, Thank you so you, much. Doctor. Good to Thank see you, you all. Yeah, good bye to bye. see you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Lord bless.